Happy Friday, my friend. It's Pat Sloan here with my daily video, and Fridays are Socialites Day. So the block this week for the Socialites block of the week is called Earnest, and it is a great star block. I love the center. Look at the center. Isn't that cool? These are a really pretty block. Now you could change out the colors. I'm using just two pieces of Morrison Park, my fabric for each block, but this one you could do a lot of different things. You could change these to a different color, and then you could also change the little bow in the middle to a different color, or you could just leave the bow the same as the background and just change these guys. You know, those are some fun options for doing this block. And I am doing the nine inch size, which is the big size. There's six and there's wee little bitty three inches. Now I wanna show you the back on this one because it is all pressed, for the most part, all pressed open. There we go. So you can see how that looks. And if you've not tried pressing open a block, the seams open, you might give it a try for this one and see if it helps you with accuracy on hitting your points. That's, it also reduces the bulk or changes. The bulk's all there. The seams are all there. You didn't get rid of any seams. What you've done is you've distributed them differently. Rather than two on one side and two on the other, you've done one on each side. So, I mean, it's, it's all, the fabric's all still there. It's just a different distribution of the bulk. And sometimes that works better for people to press those seams open. Okay, so you have the socialized block to make today. And today is my official talk about the old school block of the month, <laughs> even though I told you about the block. And I did say there's just no way I was going to make this block in a day or to have my block ready. So here is Missy's Carpenter's block from Traditional Primitives. It has the hexagons. And so I did get a little progress made on my hexagons. I do want to tell you a few things that you may not think about when sewing by hand. So let's, let's sit down. Okay, I have got, let's come all the way down. So I want to, want to show you what fabrics I'm using first. Let's just put this guy over here. So I have the peach for the background. And then like Missy's block, I am going to do a piece of fabric in the middle rather than making the middle all hexagons. And then I will be using one row of the cream, two, shade, two pieces of cream fabric that is these two. So I'll be working with this one and this one. And what you can see when I'm fussy cutting out or just cutting the hexagons, I'm not trying so much fussy cut, it's trying to use up, you know, jagged edges. So some of the pieces will be almost all cream. Then the next row outside of this will be black. So there'll be a row of black hexagons and I have a couple of black fabrics in the line. So I will alternate those all the way around. Now the papers that I'm using are the uh, ones that, that you press, they have, they're, they're pliable. So these are uh, ones Helen Stubbings cut from the fibers that stay in. So these don't come out. After I put them in here, they will stay in. Uh, and one of our friends asked if I would again show how that how I put the um, edges around, you know, how I glue them down. So let me do that again. I press the shiny side. Whoop, where is one? Okay, I press the shiny side. So can you see there, you can see the shine. Yeah, that was pressed down onto the fabric so that it's stable. So this isn't going to move at all. It's just stable right there. And this fiber is very pliable unlike, you know, here I'm just folding it, unlike the cardboards, which are more traditional. You also have plastic ones. You can also make your own. I like to buy mine. I like these fibers that stay in. So what I do is, let's come, come close, is I am running the glue stick on the fiber. So I'm running the glue stick on the fiber. You don't need that much, but then I will just fold over so that sticks down. And then I rotate. And this time I'm catching, I'm putting glue also on the fabric. So I'm putting the, just the whole edge, edge to edge. So, you know, logically you need edge to edge, right? So that it sticks. And then once again, 
and I just fold it over. And this goes very quickly when you're not trying to demo it, <laughs> when you're just holding it yourself. I mean, that's part of, it's kind of fun. A lot of my friends, when we get together to sew, some of them just bring these things to fold over. They don't actually do the sewing while we're there. They just sew, they just glue hexagons. And you can glue on the paper, but then the paper comes out. For this, the paper will not come out. So here we have all the sides down, and there's the other, there's the front of it. Now when I sew these together, when I sew these together, I'm actually sewing right on the edge. And sometimes I like to fold it like, there's lots of ways to sew these. And whip stitching it is one way. So I would just put right sides together. So you see that right sides together. And then take your needle, your threaded needle. Where'd my threaded needle go? Yep. And I usually like try to tuck the tail under here and I don't actually, I don't actually start at the corner. Do you see I'm starting just in from the corner because I just don't want tails and other things at the corner. Particularly since one of these edges will be applique down, it won't be whip stitched to another hexagon. Then I'll, I'll stitch out to the corner. I just grab a little bit of both sides. It's hard to do from not being close to my face. And I'd be sure that I, I'm sure that I get the corner all right, and because I am using these fibers and they stay in, I don't mind if I like grab a little bit of fiber, it's gonna be okay. Then when you're done, you'll open it and that will be, you know, the stitches should be really hidden. Um, and sometimes I give a little tug just to be sure. So I'm not gonna go across there right now, but what I wanna do is tell you something about needles. So this is a needle that I'm using and it is a straw needle. I particularly like this brand, which is Gina Kimball, branded by Gina Kimball. So she has picked a needle to use, uh, these straw needles. And they're a little bit longer than other needles. And I like that. The reason is I've always used that. Uh, the I tried some of these recently, uh, these Roxanne's uh, applique needles, and they're fine. Uh, let me put that, let me pull this out here a bit. Let's set the needle down. The Roxanne's are fine. Uh, you might love them to death. I find them to be a little thicker, so they're not quite my cup of tea. So, and, and they're also a little shorter. So you can see on my hand here, the Roxanne's is a much shorter needle. Let me put them down here. This will be better. Let me get close in again. There we go. So you see, this is the Roxanne's applique and the straw needle is longer. I prefer the longer needle. That's just the way I like to work. Uh, I started out when I was learning to quilt. Uh, the lady that was teaching all of the quilt classes for beginners was teaching everything by hand and she liked straw needles. So I came from, uh, an applique, not an applique, I came from an embroidery background, so I was used to using embroidery needles. Um, and I, maybe they tend to be a little bit longer anyways, an embroidery needle. So when I went to these straw needles, they felt very comfortable. Uh, and I've always then loved this little bit longer needle. So the, the um, goal here of this conversation with needles is to let you know that if one doesn't feel quite right, try a different brand. Try a different manufacturer's. Uh, try a different size needle. They don't all come the same. I have a huge container of needles. I mean, this is an obsessive amount of needles. But that's because over all the years, I would do a lot of uh, embroidery classes way back, and I would have needles to take to class so that people who didn't bring the right needle, I could just give them a needle. So like I had, you know, needles like this. You know, and that's a pretty long needle for embroidery. You know, that's why I like to work with longer needles. But that's why I have so many, is from all the teaching, I just would pick up packets so that I could give them to the students and that way everybody had a proper needle in case they didn't bring one. So you can get needles that'll work for you. Just look around. So the old school now, I will be working on getting these hexagons and then putting them be on t around 
the first, the background, this, this uh, centerpiece rather, put around the centerpiece, and then I'll be doing the black ones. Now Missy says to me that it should not take me the whole month to do this. So <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Now, I did post this out on Facebook and Instagram uh, yesterday, but if you aren't there and didn't see it, Lisa Bonjean, who is the owner of Primitive Gatherings Quilt Shop, has a trunk show. She did a, a YouTube trunk show of the books from my holiday, uh, you know, from the quilts from my holiday book. <laughs> there we go. It's, so she, here's, here's a picture. Uh, so what she did is she went through all the quilts that are in the book and she showed them to you and talked about them. And then she also put together for her store and her online store uh, several kits. I think she did four kits for some of the projects like the Halloween basket and the Thanksgiving runner uh, and a few other ones. She did a little uh, fabric kits. And so she has the book and the fabric kits all um, for you over there. I don't know if the book is pre-order or if she actually got some early stock. I mean, there's, I haven't only gotten one myself, so I know, but I know that they're coming. The books are probably not supposed to be here for another month, um, but who knows how these things work. I think she's probably doing a pre-order on the book. So if you want to uh, pop on over to uh, the Primitive Gatherings YouTube channel and take a look at what she showed of my, she, the whole thing is just the quotes from my book. So she did a super nice job. I've known Lisa for a long time. I met Lisa before she started designing quilts. She, uh, I went to her guild and taught and she came and took my workshop. Uh, and so we got to know each other. And then over the years, uh, as she went into the designing business part of it and then opened her quilt shop, you know, I would see her at the trade shows. And so we've always kept up with each other. So it's really nice for her to share my book with all of you. Yay. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, the last thing I have to show you is I got really silly lately. I need, I thought, I saw one thing. I saw a chicken fabric and then I'm like, oh, actually, that's so cute. And so now, now I need to uh, get a few other. <laughs> so I got, because I was doing an order anyways, you know, helping the economy. And uh, so I first one I got was this chicken fabric which is called um, down on the from from a line called down on the farm and the whole line is darling I think you might have to I'll, I'll see I'll check the link that I have below um, whether you can just pick up this or you have to get it in the bundle but it is so cute look at them they're like in the eggs they're you know chicks coming out of the eggs so darling then I love this very classic chicken uh, on the black and white. They also have white with black chickens and they have tan with black chickens, uh, which is so cute. It's French, la, les poulets. Poulet is French. I don't know. I'm not saying that right in French, but it's close. <laughs> the whole line has is really sort of more sophisticated. So if you have a friend with chickens, this might be super cute. Couldn't you see placemats? Can you see a tote bag out of this? The tan is really nice. Then I, I had to get, this isn't necessarily chickens, but this down on no it's called um homestead look at this this was so cute uh, look at the llama with the chicken on his back and i love the uh this at the the bees in the the stacked basket and the windmill i love the windmill of course the house the house is super super cute there's several fabrics in the line and i also had to get the sheep look look at them aren't they darling and there was a few other colors but this pink this pink oh my goodness so I might have to get a little bit more of this figure out something to do with it I don't know I just like to have it because as you've seen when I do a lot of projects uh, I like to go through and find something like this or find this cute house to put in the middle of something and I need to have these they're working stock working stock yes okay my friend I hope you are making Hexies, put the needle up here so I don't lose it. So make some hexies, give it a try. These are the three fourths inch papers that stay in. The Fat Quarter Shop has them on order. They will come back in. So uh, if you want to try the in size papers for another size, they have other sizes. All the links are down below. Also, would you subscribe? Click that little button for me because then we can keep up and you will never lose track of each other. <laughs> so I love you. Mwah. I'll see you online.